uh, blockbuster report in the Wall Street Journal reveals that the U.S. Energy Department has concluded that um, COVID-19 and, of course, the ensuing pandemic most likely arose from a laboratory leak. Now, this is according to a classified intelligence report that was recently provided both to the White House and to key members of Congress. And it is a remarkable development because the Energy Department itself had said before that they didn't know how the virus emerged, but now they think, and um, we'll see with what degree of confidence, they think that it was in fact a, a lab leak. Now the Energy Department says, we're not sure about this. Uh, we're not even highly confident. They, they say we're making this assessment with quote, low confidence, which means we think this is what happened, but we would not attach uh, a high degree of surety, uh, being sure to that. But uh, let's remember that this supports the FBI, whose own analysts came to the conclusion that the pandemic was likely the result of a lab leak. The FBI reached this decision in 2021 with, quote, moderate confidence, and the FBI still holds this view. By the way, there are other agencies of the government that have a different view. Apparently, uh, the National Intelligence Panel says they think it was likely, but again, with a low degree of confidence, uh, that COVID came out of a natural uh, transmission. And the CIA has said, we're undecided. We're not going to go one way uh, or the other. So um, now, um, I just saw a little clip with Stephen Colbert making a fool of himself. In other words, I was laughing, but not with him, but at him. He's like, oh, the energy department, the energy department. He goes, what do they know about this? He goes, why don't they fix our infrastructure? So the implication here is that somehow the Department of Energy is not qualified to make this assessment. And this poor dummy doesn't realize the energy department has all the experts that are relevant to this particular area. The energy department Department, in fact, deals uh, with, uh, with all kinds of issues related to transmission, epidemiology. And so the idea that they are somehow not uh, properly competent to do this is, is absurd. Similarly, by the way, and most people don't really know this, the FBI has a cadre of microbiologists, immunologists. So you might think if you don't know anything about the government, oh, no, 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 that must be coming from the, uh, you know, the National Institutes for Health. They're the only people who have medical doctors. This is, in fact, not true. So the FBI and the Energy Department have lots of credentials to report on this. In fact, arguably, places like the CIA are relying more on the assessments of other agencies when they make, when they make their own decision. Think of the National Intelligence Council. They don't actually have uh, this kind of epidemiological expertise. Typically, what they do is they focus on long-term strategic analysis. And so they're looking, again, at data supplied by other agencies. Now, all of this is highly significant because it kind of matches the behavior of China. Um, here's a case where, where China has been blocking the WHO from conducting a full investigation on site. So much so that, as I mentioned in a podcast a couple of uh, few days ago, uh, the WHO has basically packed up its briefcases and said, OK, we're going home. Why? Because they just can't do the follow up work that's necessary to make a kind of key determination about what happened here. Let's also remember that when we think of Wuhan, yes, there's a wet market over there, but all efforts to trace uh, COVID definitively to that wet market as the sort of source of the virus have failed. Moreover, there is a whole arsenal of labs. We, we talk about the Wuhan lab, but the Wuhan lab is not like one lab. Turns out Wuhan is home to an array of laboratories, um, all of them kind of working in concert. They include the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the Wuhan Institute of Biological Products, and a whole bunch of other similar institutes. And so you've got multiple places from which this uh, leak could have occurred. Now, does this make uh, COVID-19 a bioweapon? Not necessarily, because of course a bioweapon requires a sort of targeted or deliberate release. It could be that this thing just got out, 
But look, that's bad enough. It got out, and then what happened? First of all, the Chinese tried to duck responsibility for letting it out. Number two, the U.S. tried to hide the fact that it it has been uh, funding through taxpayer money, gain-of-function research here in the U.S., but working in collaboration with the Wuhan and other labs in China, not to to mention the possibility of the U.S. having biomedical labs that do gain-of-function in Ukraine and other parts of the world. To me, the most incriminating thing is that the um, the medical establishment, the government, the digital platforms kind of all banded together. And they not only demonized, but they began to deplatform, uh, to smear, and to censor not just ordinary citizens, but prominent doctors and scientists who said exactly what they're saying now. I mean, think how stupid the censors at YouTube and Meta feel because they've been banning information that is actually now coming out as completely plausible, as respectable. In fact, the Energy Department, a prime um, expert in this area, goes, we think that if we had to choose, we would choose that this was the result of a lab leak. So I would normally be willing to entertain the explanation of incompetence. But the fact that these people have lied, they've covered up viable treatments, they've censored scientists and journalists means that they are fully and um, complicit and they are also culpable. <laughs>